What's up coaches? Hope you guys are doing well. Here's our video for Tuesday. So we're going to be transitioning into um, uh, power base days now for the next three days. So the approach to the warm-up remains the same with the power clean now. Just note uh, in the same as um, the strength movements that we are going up and load, down in reps. Uh, power clean is a skill so it's really really important that weight is only added if people are nailing speed technique and position all right if they start adding that weight the movement patterns are poor they're going to get stuck they're going to get hurt whatever it may be all right um, it takes time so make sure that it's really really focused on the quality and position the stimulus that we get from doing power cleans and snatches is from speed, not from weight, all right? So help people understand that and make sure they're using the proper weight. So power clean with a pause at the knee and in the catch. We're gonna do this for the entire duration of the warmup. Remember that we're not doing these during the work sets, but we're encouraging technique. It gives us an opportunity to coach as well. So during the entire warmup, everyone is pulling from the ground uh, and they're gonna be pausing at the knee and in the catch. So it'll look like this. I'm gonna pause at the knee and in the catch and recover, okay? The biggest mistake that I saw last week during power cleans as people are starting to get heavier is their hips are flying up too soon. They're accelerating from the ground, they're yanking it from the floor. This pause from the knee should fix that, or at least it reinforces the proper pulling technique, and it may cause people to bring their weight down to where their weight should be in order to gain that proper first pull into the second pull. All right, so you'll demo this, have people practice the pause at the knee and in the catch position. Second movement is a PVC overhead squat and then body weight renegade row. So no dumbbells in hand, they'll be in the push up position, rowing their arms five on each side. All right, so now we're moving into every two minutes for seven cycles. That's power base day, all right? We only have two movements, all right? So what we're doing is we're gonna go a super set here where we'll go back to back without rest. They'll complete their power clean set, then they'll complete their chin ups, and the remainder of that two minute cycle will be their rest period, all right? So the power cleans, we've got the singles for the strength competitor group, 85 to 90% of one rep max. Um, then we have our uh, hang power cleans for the performance group, 85 to 90% of five rep max. Please make sure they know they're using their five rep max, not their one rep max. Uh, notice there's a plus sign. Um, there might be some people that are outside of that range, uh, maybe even on either side, where the window of suggestion is there, but if they need to go a little heavier to hit that heavy but perfect stimulus or a little lighter, make sure your athletes are doing that, all right? They do not have to continue the pauses, but a great way to fix the uh, improper pulling from the ground or a poor receiving position is to make them stick with that during the entire workout, all right? That's a case by case basis, but if I have somebody whose their hips are coming off the ground really, really fast, uh, or they're making a poor elbow transition through, then I'm gonna go ahead and have them pause in a couple different positions to reinforce that throughout the duration of the day, all right? So we have our high pulls for the fitness group. They're going five to 10 pounds heavier now. Their goal is to go up in weight than what they did for their 15 rep max. Everybody's doing three to five chin-ups. Uh, we're kind of falling in a groove with this. So we're using the same exact scales. We wanna fall within that three to five uh, rep range with a really, really tough but perfect set of chin-ups. Weighted chins, body weight chins, light bands for chins or ring row chins, meaning that we pull all the way in. All right, remember that more power comes from a full horizontal ring row than lots of bands on a pull-up based movement cool let's talk about your workout so we have three rounds each round is going to be for max reps what we're referring to as max reps here is our um, distance on the rower so we're going to be going um 20 to 25 wall balls the 20 to 25 wall balls uh we want the fast wall ballers to shoot for 25 slower wall ballers should shoot for around 20. no matter what 60 seconds is the cap to get it done so we want people on the rower and accumulating road distance uh, within that minute to minute and five range getting after it 
Load here, uh, this should allow 40 unbroken when fresh. This is not part of the score on the workout. Uh, all we're scoring is the rower. This is a buy-in to put the athlete on the rower in a moderate state of fatigue. It's also helping us accumulate some squat repetitions, all right? So uh, we wanna be patient, we wanna hit perfect reps. Hitting the target with a wall ball is of least importance, all right? The depth and quality of the squat um, is of most importance. So lighten the load. Don't even throw it. Do wall ball style thrusters or even bear hug squats, even air squats, right? If they're struggling to accumulate reps using the ball, uh, we want them to chase a little bit of intensity with today's squat. So have them lose the ball completely, do air squats uh, as many as they can within that 60 second frame, and then pop them onto the rower and have them chase that intensity on the rower. All right, so our row here, this is our centerpiece. We're getting on, we're getting after it. It's not a full sprint, but it's pretty damn close, 95%. Um, we wanna really, really be gassed by the end of this because we have a three minute break before we hop on again, okay? So uh, make sure that you hit your primer. It is really important that you see the wall ball that people are using. Uh, we want them to be able to stay consistent and steady at, within that 60 seconds. There should be little to no break during that time period. Um, and then the rowing, we simply want them to experience a little bit of high heart rate before they hop onto that high intensity interval. Logistics here. Um, we want to continue to um, start half of the group uh, at zero and half of the group at one. This is if you have any size group whatsoever, meaning like if you have eight people or more, 10 people or more, do it, please. If you have less than that, you may not have to do that, but it really helps with coaching and with logistics. People still want to stay a safe distance from one another and so on. Start half that group at zero, half that group at one. All right, logistics on the workout, easy setup here. Partners can share the rower if needed. Just use the intervals that I've given you in the notes. All right, hope you guys have a great day. If you have questions or feedback, let me know. See ya.